Um, my name is Xin Yu Wang. I'm a PhD student from the Utopia Group at UT Austin. In this talk, I'll be talking about our recent work on synthesizing date completion scripts using finite tree automata. This is a joint work with Isho Dilik and Rishabh Singh. The problem we're solving in this work is the problem of missing data. So this is a serious problem because having missing data hinders data analytics. This is also a common problem. According to a survey of quantitative studies, only 36% of the data sets had no missing data. One solution to this problem is data imputation, which is the procedure of replacing missing values based on other data. Manually performing data imputation is both tedious and error prone, and therefore, we would like to automate this process. And one way for automating this is to write a program f such that applying f on each missing entry yields a desired value for it. For instance, imagine we have a data set with two columns. And what I'm showing you here, sorry, showing, what I'm showing you here is just the first five rows in the data set that has a missing entry. And we would like to perform data mutation on this data set by replacing each missing value by the sum of the previous value with the same ID and the number two. For instance, in this case, we would like to replace the missing value by the value 10. To automate this, we want to write a program f such that applying f on the missing entry, in this case, 5b, yields a desired value for it, and in this case, 10. Let's think about how to do this. So to write this program, we know that this, this program should add 2 to the value of some cell. Or in other words, we know the sketch of this f. However, instantiating the hole in the sketch is not easy because the hole itself is another program, p, that extracts some cell based on the input cell, the missing entry. In addition, the program p should satisfy some constraints. And in this case, p should produce the cell 2b given 5b as the input uh, cell. We have studied dozens of online posts with questions uh, for performing data imputation, and our, our observation is that it is typically very easy for the end users to specify which operator to be used in the, in the imputation logic. However, it is very difficult for them to express the general cell extraction logic, and they tend to use input output examples to describe what they have in mind. Based on this insight, in this work, we propose a program synthesis methodology for automatically generating data mutation scripts that combines program sketching and program programming by example techniques. To see how this idea works, let's just re revisit our previous problem. Recall that the task there is to replace each missing value by the sum of the previous value with the same ID and the number two. To do this, the user first gives a sketch formula. So the, the hole in the sketch represents a cell extraction program that extracts a cell based on the input cell, the missing entry. And the meaning of the sketch is to replace each missing value by the sum of the value in the extracted cell and the number two. Moreover, the user also gives some input of examples for the hole. And in this case, the example would be 5b goes to 2b, meaning that given 5b, the missing entry as the input cell, the program, the cell extraction program, should return 2b as the output. Since the PBE part is more interesting, in the rest of the talk, I will only focus on our algorithm for synthesizing cell extraction programs given input-output examples. To synthesize cell extraction programs given input-output examples, we have proposed a domain specific language that is both precise, sorry, both expressive and concise. Moreover, 
we proposed a program synthesis methodology that is essentially a new version-based learning algorithm based on the use of finite tree automata. In what follows, I will first present some of the key constructs in our DSL, and then I will tell you some of the main ideas in our algorithm. Let's look at the DSL first. Since a cell extraction program is essentially extracting cells based on the input cell, the key and the most basic building block in our DSL is a cell, cell program, tau, that extracts a single cell given the input cell. So in the simplest case, it extracts the input cell X itself. More generally, it is a get cell program that takes tau, a cell program, a direction, and a predicate fee as arguments. And what this does is to go from the cell that tau evaluates to, follow the direction, and extract the next cell that satisfies the predicate. To illustrate how this get cell program works, let's use it to solve our previous problem, where we want to extract the previous entry with the same ID. So it turns out that to do this, we just need to write a very simple get cell program. So the program uses up as the direction because we want, because we want to go upwards from the input cell and uses a predicate phi that compares the values in the ID column because we want to get a cell that has the same ID as the input cell. As we can see here, our get, get cell construct combines both spatial reasoning as well as relational reasoning, and it turns out that this ability is very important for successfully expressing a large class of data computation tasks we have encountered. Building upon the cell programs, our language supports another construct called simple program that extracts multiple cells given the input cell. Our language currently supports two simple programs, list and filter. A list program takes n cell programs as arguments and simply puts them together. A filter program is a bit more complicated. It takes a range of cells and keeps only those cells that satisfy the predicate B. On top of simple programs, our language allows a restricted form of conditional defined by this sequence construct. And intuitively, a, what, a, what a sequence program does is just to execute the next simple program only if the execution of the current one fails to extract any cell. With this DSL in mind, let's now turn to the synthesis algorithm and see how we can synthesize cell extraction programs from input-output examples. So as mentioned earlier, the main novelty in our synthesis algorithm is the use of finite tree automata. So before diving into detail of our algorithm, let's first quickly go over some of the basics of finite tree automata. From high level, a tree automata generalizes a word automata by accepting trees rather than words. A bit more formally, a tree automata is defined by a four tuple, the set of states, the alphabet, a set of final states, and a set of transitions, or rewrite rules. A tree is accepted by a tree automata if the root of the tree can be rewritten to a final state using the rewrite rules. And the language defined by a tree automata is the set of trees that are accepted by the tree automata. To illustrate, to give you a more concrete idea how a tree automata works, uh, let's look at a very simple tree automata. In this automata, we have two states, only Q0 and Q1, where Q1 is the only final state. The alphabet has four symbols, 0, 1 as to null order function, negation as a unary function, and conjunction as a binary function. It has eight transitions, which are basically defining the meaning of negation and conjunction. The language defined by this tree automata is exactly the set of ground propositional formulas that evaluate to true. As a result, the tree automata should accept this formula because it values to true. We can actually check that 
this formula is indeed accepted by the trio automata by executing the rewrite rules. So we will go bottom up from the leaves. The leaf node zero is written to state Q0. The leaf node one goes to Q1. The negation node goes to Q1. And finally, the root node is written to state Q1. Since Q1 is the final state, this tree, and hence the formula, is accepted by the tree automata. So we have reviewed some of the basics of finite tree automata. Let's look at uh, how to use it in program synthesis. Our key idea here is to use tree automata to represent all the DSL programs that are consistent with the input output examples. And this idea essentially yields a new variance based learning algorithm that uses tree automata as the representation of the hypothesis space. More concretely, our idea works as follows. Given a set of input output examples and the domain specific language, our algorithm first constructs a finite tree automata whose language is exactly the set of DSL programs that are consistent with the examples. Then the language performs some ranking heuristic to pick the best program and returns, finally returns that program to the user. So now let me uh, instantiate this idea to our problem of synthesizing cell extraction programs. Given the DSL I just uh, mentioned earlier, a, a table with missing entries, as well as one input output example, the automata is constructed as follows. We will include one state for each cell in the table, as well as one state for the output example. Only the state for the output example is marked as the final state. A symbol in the alphabet corresponds to a DSL operator. As for the transitions, we will include one transition going from argument state Q1 through Qn to the output state Q0 if and only if executing f with values corresponding to the argument states yields the value that corresponds to the output state. For the detail regarding our construction rule, please refer to our paper. And in this talk, I'll illustrate how our construction works using one example. Imagine we have a data set, a table with four cells, and assume the task is to fill the missing entry by the value upwards and the, by the sum of the value upwards and the, the, the value to the left. In this case, the missing entry C4 will be filled by the sum of the values uh, in C2 and C3. For the cell extraction part, the input output example will be C4 goes to C2, C3. So we will construct the automata as follows. The, automa the, the automata has five states, Q1 through Q4. These four states are created for the four cells in the table. Q star is created for the output example, and only Q star is marked as the final state. The alphabet corresponds to the DSL operators in, the D, uh, in, in our language, um, such as get cell and list. And now we'll construct the transitions. We'll have a transition going from state Q4 to Q2 labeled with get cell because executing get cell with C, with C4 as the input will yield the value C2, the cell C2. Similarly, we'll have a transition from Q4 to Q3 labeled with get, labeled with get cell. In addition, we will include a transition from Q to Q3 to Q star labeled with list because applying list on, Q, on C to C3 yields the output example. We will continue this construction until all possible transitions are included, and this is roughly the structure of the FTA we get uh, at the very end. So with this FTA, our algorithm will perform some ranking heuristics and picks the best program to return to the user, and it turns out in this case, the program it picks is a list program with two arguments being two get cell programs. All right, 
So this is everything I have for the technical parts of the talk. Now let's briefly look at how this technique works in practice. So we have collected a total of 84 benchmarks from Stack Overflow. Each post contains exactly the information we required, namely an, an example table, a formula sketch, a set of input out of examples. We have implemented our proposed ideas in a tool called DACE and use DACE to automatically synthesize programs for solving our benchmark problems. And our experimental result is quite promising. In particular, DACE can solve about 92% of benchmarks uh, with an average running time of about 0.7 seconds. It takes on average about two examples to solve each benchmark problem. There are six benchmarks that DACE failed to, failed to solve. One of them is due to the limitation in our specification language, and five of them are because of the limitation in our DSL. We have also compared the performance of DACE to the performance of PROS, which is a state-of-the-art synthesis framework based on version space algebra. In our experiments, we have instantiated PROS for our data imputation domain and used the, the instantiation to solve our benchmark problems. Our experimental result showed that this can solve more benchmark problems than PROS within a short time. To conclude, in this work, we have applied program synthesis techniques to automate data imputation. Our method combines program sketching and programming by example techniques. And the main novelty in our work is twofold. First, we have proposed a domain-specific language for data imputation. And second, we have used um, finite trial automata in the novel program synthesis methodology. With that, I'm happy to take questions.